scalpel. It's a hemorrhage! We're losing him! We're losing him! <sighs> too, too late. Too far gone. <sighs> Death often strikes when a major life support system fails. Often the, the reasons are complex and hard to detect beforehand. This case was particularly critical. It involved the failure of virtually every major life support system. Management control, accounting, auditing, corporate governance, and a failure in oversight by regulatory authorities. With so many problems, it's no wonder one till died. Beyond the muddled issue of how much is owed to whom in the wake of one tell's spectacular self-combustion, administrators have started attributing blame. There's certainly a perception among shareholders that they were misled as to the true financial position and prospect of the company. The administrator's report claims OneTel was carrying too many debtors and from the beginning of the year its cash reserves were plummeting, its losses mounting. One of the systems that ought to have sustained the life of OneTel was its accounting and financial reporting system. Every public company is required to publish detailed financial reports, a statement of financial performance, a statement of financial position, statements of cash flow and an auditor's report. These reports provide an insight into a company's financial health. They're like a, a stethoscope that helps determine from the outside what's happening on the inside. But sometimes the role of each of these reports and the information they're intended to convey gets confused and misunderstood. So let's look at the one till statement of financial position. Can we unlock any common misunderstandings? Is there anything that might have led us to be cautious about the company's financial future? Was the one till statement of financial position as at 30th of June 2000 a good indicator of its financial health and likely well-being? And if not, why not? The statement of financial position shows three major things. What a company owns, its assets, amounts owed to those outside the company, its liabilities. It also shows where the money came from to acquire those assets, profits that have been retained in the company, and thus the amounts owed to those who own the company, its shareholders' equity. By definition, shareholders' equity equals the excess of assets over liabilities, often called net assets or net worth presumably a measure of the historical worth of a company. Looking at OneTel's net assets, we can see that the statement of financial position shows that they had grown from $363 million in 1999 to $945 million in 2000, a healthy increase in anyone's book. But where had the growth in net assets come from? Was it from profits? No, it wasn't. The profit and loss statement showed that the company had accumulated losses of $282.1 million. From the statements of cash flows, we can see that asset growth came primarily from the proceeds of issuing shares. A large chunk of this cash was then used to purchase Spectrum licenses, shown here under investing activities. One tell aimed to expand by building its own mobile phone networks. There are two major points to consider when looking at a statement of financial position. These numbers here are known as the money of account. These figures, although preceded by dollar signs, should never, ever be considered to be the same as cold, hard cash that we can pay bills with, if you like, material money. But they're listed as assets and given a dollar value. So why shouldn't we think of them in real dollar terms? You're looking a bit glum. What's up? I had a really bad day. I tried to buy a new car today and I had real problems. In what way? Well, I sold 10,000 of my mobile handsets to Gontel this morning. Well, that's good, isn't it? Well, yes. Except that they paid me with a chunk of their assets in the form of this piece of their future tax credit. So what's the problem? It's listed on this statement of financial position as one of their assets. Why the long face? Well, I chose my car. A red sporty number with low profiles, huge V8 engine, leather seats, drinks yes, holder. Yes, yes, and? When I went to pay for it, 
the salesmen looked at me in a funny way and they said that they didn't accept Gontel future tax credits as payment for one of their cars. Apparently they generally prefer cash or approved credit sources, whatever that may be. I told them what Gontel told me, that this is virtually money in the bank from the government. But they weren't having any of it. They wouldn't let me drive the car away. So what did you do with it? Well, I took it to the bank to swap it for cash there. And? And they weren't interested either. They're strange things, these company assets. They're not all they're cracked up to be, that's for sure. And the second point to remember when looking at a statement of financial position is that many companies that are about to fail seem to overstate assets and understate liabilities. In this way, they're overstating their net worth. The whole concept was really overstating its assets, I guess, because what they were doing was it was just completely revenue driven and every bit of revenue that they were bringing in, like the Optus bonus, like a new customer, any new accounts were all coming in booking in revenue, but they weren't booking anything in costs. Let's take a more detailed look at some of OneTel's listed asset values. They claim to have had $335 million available in cash. How this figure was derived can be seen in the statements of cash flows. The crux of OneTel's problem was that they needed to convince the market and their investors that they had enough cash to meet their day-to-day -day operations and their expansion plans. Although listed as an asset, could OneTel really expect to recover what they'd paid for their licenses if they ever needed to? And why should people have doubted that the business would turn a profit in the near future? After all, in the previous year, the company had trebled customer numbers to about 1.8 million. Again, if we look at their receivables and bad debt figures in the statement of financial position, we get an idea of the quality of their customer base and the turmoil their billing and credit control systems were in. Looking at OneTel's cash flow statements, we see that they'd collected $511 million from customers in the year on sales revenue of $653 million. They also listed a further $124 million, 19% of their total sales revenue, as accrued income. That is, income for services OneTel had provided but hadn't billed customers for by the end of the year. This shows that virtually a fifth of their potential income for the year had not been billed, let alone actually collected. Furthermore, they were also anticipating that a whopping 37.5% of this accrued income, their accounts receivable, would never be recovered, as shown by the $46 million they were provisioning for doubtful debts. Such a situation was definitely not going to help their cash flow. It's clear from the one-till statement of financial position that the figures do not indicate that the company would imminently fail. However, by reconstructing and adjusting the figures, we can see a number of clues were there. If you know what you're looking at, a statement of financial position can serve as a basis for estimating a company's capacity to access cash or near cash items with which to pay their bills when they fall due. The company's cash spend had blown out from about 60 million the prior year to 670 million the 2000 year, which showed that the company was running out of cash very quickly. And just to give you some idea, they were spending 170 million just to keep the company going, let alone any expenditure on expansion plans. And so we suddenly realised that the company wasn't going to survive. There's no doubt that in the case of one till a number of important questions remain. Number one, why did the company receive a clean bill of health in the form of an unqualified audit report and then six months later go out of business? Number two, should the audit report have contained qualifications alerting shareholders to the weaknesses within the business? Or was it the auditor's job merely to confirm that one till's financial statements are drawn up in accord with generally accepted accounting practices and in conformity with the law. What's the role and purpose of the statement of financial position and the audit report anyway? What are assets and liabilities? And why don't the assets and liabilities shown represent real dollar values? If you want to avoid being none tilled, I'd recommend that these are questions worth getting to the bottom of. So, how'd you get on at the administrators meeting today? Fantastic. I gave him 100,000 gone till shares and he gave me this. What is it? It's a piece of their Spectrum license. You know, the one they paid 500 million for. Wow, that'll be really useful in retirement.